Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Hello, and welcome to this video on Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. In this video, we will be exploring one of the most important concepts in population genetics and how it relates to the MCAT. So let's start off by what is Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is a theoretical concept in population genetics that describes how the frequency of alleles in a population remains constant from generation to generation. The Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium was first introduced by G.H. Hardy and W. Weinberg in 1908. So this is one of those old MCAT theories that you'll need to know for test day. First, let's talk about the five assumptions of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. All five key assumptions must be met in order for a population to be considered in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So what that means is even if one of these assumptions is not met, we say that that population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, meaning that the alleles are not changing in frequency. So what are these assumptions? The first assumption is that there are no new mutations. This means that there are no new type of alleles being introduced to the population. We know in reality that oftentimes there are new mutations being added into a new population, but for the purpose of Hardy-Weinberg, this is often overlooked as just having a very low frequency. The second assumption is that a large population size is present. So this means that we have a large group of animals or whatever species we're looking at. This is to ensure that random fluctuations in the frequency of alleles do not occur. For example, if we just had five species and they happen to mate one way, this limits the likelihood that a small population can have of breeding out certain alleles. Our third assumption is that there's no natural selection occurring. This means that there's no natural selection favoring one allele over another. This is often what the MCAT will test. They want to say, hey, is this allele actually being selected against? Is this important for whatever environmental condition we're testing? If there's a change in allele frequency after the experiment, then we would say that the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Next up, we have no migration. The population can't be migrating in and out. We want to ensure that we start with the same allele pool and we end with the same allele pool. And finally, there is only random mating. There is no sexual preference. All individuals in the population are just mating randomly without any bias, any sexual selection towards any certain alleles. It's important to note that these assumptions are just that, assumptions. In real populations, these conditions are rarely met, and as a result, the frequency of alleles can change over time. However, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium provides a baseline or a starting point that can be used to understand the genetic makeup of a population. So why is the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium important for you taking the MCAT? It's one of the most commonly tested concepts in genetics on the MCAT. It's critical you know the assumptions as well as how to use the equations that we're about to jump into. The Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium can be represented mathematically by the following equations. P squared plus 2PQ equals 1. This is where P equals the frequency of the dominant allele while q equals the frequency of the recessive allele, which I'm just going to show with a lowercase allele. There are also a number of other equations that are related to the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, including p plus q equals 1. This equation states that the sum of the frequencies of the dominant and recessive alleles must equal 1. We have p squared, which represents the proportion of individuals in the population that have two copies of the dominant allele, or, or homozygous dominant. Then we have 2PQ. This equation represents the proportion of individuals in the population that have one dominant allele and one recessive allele, aka heterozygous. And finally, we have Q squared. This equation represents the proportion of individuals in the population that have two copies of the recessive allele, or, or homozygous recessive. By using these equations, it is possible to calculate the frequency of alleles in a population and how they may change over time given certain assumptions. Let's look at an example to understand these equations by application. Let's say a population has a frequency of the dominant allele for a certain gene of p equals 0 
and the frequency of the recessive allele is q equals 0 0.4. Using the Hardy-Weinberg equations, we can then calculate the genotype in this population. So if we say p squared, and then that's just 0 0.6 times 0 0.6, this is the same as 0 0.36. How about the heterogeneous group? Well, this is 2 times p times q, or 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 times 2. And this is going to equal 0 0.48, or 48%. And finally, if we want to find the homozygous recessive, we'll just take q squared, which is 0 0.4 times 0 0.4, which is just simply 0 0.16. And you always want to make sure that your numbers add up to 1 in the end, because we know p plus q equals 1. So this is a good way to check to see if you did it right. So 36 plus 48, this equals 84, plus 16 equals 100, or if we put the decimals, equals 1. In our next video, we will explore more in-depth guided Hardy-Weinberg problems. I strongly recommend you check out this companion video to finish mastering this important skill. In conclusion, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is a theoretical concept in population genetics that describes how the frequency of alleles in a population remains constant from generation to generation, given these five key assumptions. Understanding the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and its assumptions are essential because it provides a baseline for understanding the genetic makeup of a population and how it can change over time, in addition to being the most commonly tested genetics application problem on the NCAT. Thank you so much for watching our video on the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with others who are studying for the MCAT. Thank you for watching our video on Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and I'll see you next time.